Hey folks, Jay from ebodyboarding.com and today I'm going to talk to you about bodyboard anatomy. A simple topic, but one that covers a lot of ground. So let's jump straight into it. Let's start out with a bodyboard here and the shape of the bodyboard, the outline of the bodyboard, the curves of the bodyboard are also known as the template. So you may hear people talk about the template of, the, of a board being a prone shape or a drop knee shape, a rounded template. All of that refers to uh, differences in that outline or template of the board. So generally speaking, boards that are specific for prone riders will have a template with a slightly higher wide point. So the widest point on the board will be higher up on the board. And the drop knee shapes generally will have one that's lower on the board, down closer towards the tail. Uh, and there's combo boards that work well for both, and that may, may be somewhere in between those two. There's a lot of variety in templates, and you have to do trial and error to figure out which one works best for you. So let's talk about the parts of the board. This, the top of the board, where you lay down, is known as the deck of the board. So simple, there's the deck. This is the bottom or the slick of the board. This is the nose. That's the top of the board where you're gonna hold on when you're laying down. And the back end of the board is known as the tail. This particular board has a crescent tail. So it's a crescent shaped tail. And the purpose of the crescent tail is it tends to lock your body into the board a little bit more effectively, keep you sort of positioned on the tail of the board. In terms of riding benefits, it tends to hold an edge better on the wave face. Uh, another type of tail, I'll just grab one real quick, here is the bat tail. And the bat tail does not have that crescent shape. As you can see, it actually comes out in the center and that provides a little more surface area, which adds to the speed of the board, but it also makes it a little more difficult to control. Also, the deck of some boards, as you can see on this one, have what are called contours on them. And those are effectively little sort of ridges and valleys, if you will, uh, that enhance the grip of the board. So this one has a little, as I said, like a little valley or a depression where you're forearm locks in and a ridge here, this is a, uh, a hand bulb where the palm of your hand fits in to help lock your grip in better. Some riders like contours, some don't. Uh, generally speaking, for me, I ride in the drop knee position sometimes, up on one knee, one foot, and I do not like contours. They sort of get in the way of me being able to position my body around on the board. So that's a bat tail. Now, uh, the slick, I mentioned, the bottom of the board, uh, this can be made of a couple different materials, generally speaking. Uh, Surlin would be the high-end material. It's a very pliable, uh, slightly softer slick bottom. It's, it's a plastic, uh, and most high-end boards will have a Surlin bottom on them. But the other type of bottom is called high-density polyethylene, which looks and feels exactly like Surlin, but it's a little stiffer, a little more rigid, a little more prone to creasing. Uh, creasing isn't a big deal these days in a board. If you get a crease across the bottom, it doesn't really matter anymore because of stiffeners inside the board. And that's where we're gonna go to in just a minute. But finally, I wanted to touch on channels. Most modern body boards have channels on the bottom. Uh, this is a standard channel board with two what we call graduated channels. So they start narrow and they widen as they go off the tail. Some boards have multiple channels or different contours on the bottom. They have, uh, you know, four, three, four, five channels in some cases, all to enhance the traction of the board on the wave face. So let's get into the internal structure of the board. Uh, oh, forgot to touch on rails. Let's talk about the rail of the board. So the rail is the side of the board. That's the bottom rail down here, and the top part is called the chine, C-H-I-N-E. Uh, rails can be single or double, which basically means that 
they'll have one or two pieces of foam on them uh, laminated together. This particular one is a double rail. You can see the black piece of foam and sandwiched underneath is a blue piece of foam. So that's a double rail. It enhances the stiffness of the board. And that brings us back to what I was just about to jump into, and that is the internal structure of a bodyboard. So essentially there's three types of bodyboard cores, and there's variations on this, but just to keep it simple for the purposes of this uh, video, uh, there's the entry level boards, which are made with a material called EPS. That stands for expanded polystyrene, which is a fancy way of saying styrofoam. So EPS is very lightweight, it's very cheap. These boards are inexpensive. They generally have no stiffeners in them and they don't have any memory, which means they dent easily. So if you push on this core, this is a beaded core, it will dent, it won't spring back. Uh, they're cheap though, uh, but don't expect them to perform great or last very long. The next two cores uh, are much, much better in quality and performance and durability. That would be polyethylene, also known as PE, which is a cellular core, and it, do, it does have memory. You push on it, it springs back. And polypropylene, which is also a beaded core. It looks similar to EPS, but it's got polymers in it that make it way stronger and give it memory, so it does spring back. It is also a very lightweight core. Uh, all of these have different properties to them. Polyethylene, for example, uh, is very sensitive to water temperature. So uh, if the water is very warm, polyethylene tends to get fairly flexible. Um, so people in tropical climates may want to avoid a polyethylene board. It is generally less expensive than polypropylene in most cases, uh, but it's better suited to cooler waters, I would say. Now, let's say water temperature is below 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about uh, 21 Celsius. Polypropylene, by contrast, is good in almost all water temperatures. Uh, it is on the stiffer side, but it comes in different densities, and there's a lower density version that mimics somewhat the flex properties of polyethylene, but without the temperature sensitivity. So you can get a low density polypro core and get a pretty good all around uh, amount of flex out of it in all water temperatures. Or if you're in the tropics or riding big heavy waves all the time, the higher density polypropylene is a good idea. Generally speaking, polyethylene and polypropylene boards uh, have stiffeners in them. And those stiffeners can be basically one of three things. Uh, the most common of which is going to be a stringer. So this is a stringer. It's basically a graphite rod it does have some flex to it. Uh, there are different flexibility ratings and stringers, but generally speaking, they're gonna prevent your board from flexing too much. Uh, they generally run the length of the board, uh, not the entire length of the board, but pretty much from uh, a little down from the nose to a little bit up from the tail. Some boards will have multiple stringers. Some boards can have two or three stringers. Another stiffening agent that you see in bodyboards is mesh. Now this particular board has mesh underneath the slick and it has a clear slick so that you can actually see the mesh, but the mesh is embedded in between the slick and the core material. And that also enhances the, uh, the stiffness of the board. This particular board we cut in half, got you a cross section so you could see how the stringers are inserted right into the, into the core of the board. This is a double stringer board, obviously. Uh, so that enhances the stiffness. And then there's yet another stiffener uh, in our tribe brand of boards we use in some models, something called Skin Tech, which is basically a layer of uh, plastic. It's a layer of slick under the deck skin. Same principle though, prevents the board from over flexing, right? So that gives you a pretty good rundown of how a bodyboard is created and designed. We do have a link on our site called Board Anatomy, and we also have a blog called Cores and Stringers and Mesh, oh my, that gives you a little more 
detail on all these things I've talked about, but hopefully that gives you an idea of how bodyboards are constructed.